This is an ad from the 1970s from Volkswagen. This is another ad from Old Spice. Smell like a man. And here's one more great ad from Coca-Cola. Let's just read real quickly the headline and the copy. Want something good? You've got it. When your hands ground a frosty bottle of Coke, you'll enjoy this tingling, delicious refreshment. Very interesting. You see, since ads were introduced, brands understood that their customers do not buy just solely because of the functionality or what the product it does only. After tens of testings and learnings, they understood that people buy because they have some kind of certain emotions or certain emotional desires in their mind when it comes to purchasing a product. And this is why legendary marketers like David Ogilvy or Robert Cialdini understood that if they just rely on the functionality of a product, most likely those products won't last or won't get them a profitable ROI from their advertising campaigns. So what they did is they started digging more into the human persuasion techniques. We can also call them human psychological triggers. Triggers that I would like to share with you in this comprehensive video. Now, something to consider is that the persuasion techniques that I'm about to show you can get quite manipulative and could jeopardize the whole ad account due to all the new ad policy updates involved. Before we go ahead and we start implementing these techniques, we'll need to make a little bit of homework and we'll need to understand whether we can use them or not. For example, I pulled up an ad, a very successful ad from Dodge, which uh, was running pretty, pretty successfully for this brand. And if we take a look at this, right, we see here a car, a Dodge car and a pretty beautiful woman. Let's just read real quickly the copy. And as we can see, the headline says, mother, word me, okay? That there would be men like you driving cars like that. Do you really think you can get to me with that long, low, tough machine you just rolled up in? If you think a girl with real values is impressed by your air conditioning and stereo a 44 zero Magnum, whatever that is, well, it takes more than Koshi bucket seats to make me flip. <laughs> Charger uh, RTCA sounds like alphabet soup. What we're trying to do here with these words is we're trying to use the customer language. Frankly, I am attracted to you because you have a very intelligent face. My name is Julia. Join the phone, catch Dodge fever. Okay. Well, what I can say is that it really appeals to pretty much one emotion and that is sex. Like if you drive this car, you're going to attract the opposite gender and you're going to have, you know, a lot more interesting nights. So running an ad or, you know, writing a copy like this on Facebook would probably get your ad account like shut down. <laughs> So this is why like even if we look at these ads and if we, even if we look at it was successful, we have to make like our homework and understand the policy of the platform where we're running ads to. Now there are tens of sales psychological triggers that we can use to make people buy. But just from this ad that I just showed you, the question remains one. Which one are we going to use so we could ensure that we're going to get the most amount of sales, we could persuade as many people as possible to purchase our product while we do not put our ad account in a danger. And now for that, we'll have to go through three categories. And I broke it down quite simple. We're gonna call them very simple, like low, mid and high impact sales psychological triggers. Now with low impact persuasion techniques, we are not resorting very much on manipulative or too aggressive persuasion techniques. Rather, we're just leading people to understand the better the value of a product and we're just trying to show them why they have to purchase right now and why this is the right product for them. And here we have five psychological triggers, starting with the first one, which is social proof. This essentially means that people have a natural kind of drive to copy others' decisions and behaviors. 
At TeamPlayVid I would like to show you that I've seen works quite well when it comes to using the social proof psychological trigger is going to sound something like this. In the brackets you will change the text based on your business. Pretty much, first of all, we'll need to call where we need to say an exact number of our target audience. For example, 10,000 people or 50,000 people or 100,000 people. Then we'll add a verb, for example, love or prefer and then you will put the product name. This is one way to do that. And the second way is to make people ponder about some kind of statistics that you came across with. Of course, the statistic should be authentic and should be true. For instance, we have here an ad from Hyundai, which we have here a copy, very interesting. So it says, have you also noticed so many Hyundais lately? You see how it makes you meditate and ponder like, Oh, maybe like I have actually seen a lot of Hyundais. And because we question like a question like that, we start thinking that if there are so many Hyundais around me, that must be good. Testimonials and reviews are an essential aspect of building social proof. The more reviews you are going to get, the better your conversion rate will look. And by also having reviews that tackle your customers' objections or concerns, you can increase your conversion rate even further. Because at that time, you let your potential next customers understand better the value of your product and how actually it worked also for other people as well. Moving on to the second low impact psychological trigger, this is what we call it the reciprocity effect, which this simply means that when you are receiving a gift, inside yourself you feel a social obligation to return it. This is why you'll see that many, many, many brands by trying to use the word free. Because with the reciprocity effect, when you're trying to give something valuable upfront, let's say some kind of free chit chat or some kind of free engraving, it makes people feel that they got already value upfront because it's like in our DNA, it's like how we've been wired. We would like to give something back just because that person or that brand helped us in advance. The third one is scarcity. Creating the perception that the product is limited makes us want that product even more. You see, there was an experiment in the 70s, as I remember, pretty much that experiment was with two jars with cookies. One jar was with lots of cookies and another one was with just two or three cookies. And what happened is that they put like lots of people and they said, okay, give it a try and see like which one tastes better. Even though the cookies were the same, pretty much identical, the ones that were with less cookies, people rated more delicious and more high-end. So if you can implement this both in your ads and on your website, this will definitely increase the desire for someone to go ahead and pull the trigger and purchase your you know, products. Now going forward to the next one, this one is something that I really love and I advise to all of my e-commerce clients when we work with and when they have a capability. That is using the sales psychological trigger, which I call authority. You see, people who signify authority, they trigger compliance and obedience. You see, by associating your brand with a particular public figure or with a particular authority, you could enhance the status of your brand, of your products, and the status that you know your potential customers can see once they get your product, they will be able to elevate their public image, you know, in front of their peers, in front of their family, in front of themselves just by using your product. Now, when I say authority, I don't necessarily mean that you just need to solely rely on you know, public figures. You could use different events or shows. For example, I've seen an ad where uh, there is like this particular person, you know, who says that they saw this product on the Shark Tank. And because of this particular show, Shark Tank has some kind of value and it seemed like a very big show, it has some authority in, you know, in front of business owners, in front of customers. By associating with this particular, you know, event, with this particular company, they could again elevate the company's status 
the company's public image immediately. In simple words, having celebrities give you the possibility of borrowing status from different events, from different people, and from different actions that you could you know, use to enhance even more the value of your brand and the value of your products. And the next one is going to be urgency. This is going to be an imputed kind of feeling of the fact that we might miss out on something and then we'll need to wait. As human beings, we don't like to wait for something, especially when we have a huge desire for a certain product or service. However, one very important thing that I have to mention is that do not overuse this urgency effect because I've seen different e-commerce brands, they try to use it all the time and that will come across as unauthentic and disgenuous. We covered the low level sales psychological triggers, but what about the medium ones? What are those? and how we could use them and what are the advantages or maybe disadvantages. I would define these sales psychological triggers somewhere in the between where we do not use very manipulative techniques, but at the same time, it encourages people to go ahead and see more like why they have to purchase right now and why this is valuable to their life, to their problems, to their desires. Let's start with the first one, which is anchoring. And essentially what we're going to try to do here is we want to kind of show how valuable the product that we're selling is by comparing to something else. If you do not give something to your customers to compare your product with, they'll compare with whatever it comes up in their mind. Experiment to see how much easier new ferry with lift action makes the washing up, even on these. <laughs> No mess, no grease. And that comparison might not be true and might not be very helpful for your customer because whatever it comes up in their mind can be a huge lie depending on their beliefs. Why not have this advantage upfront by giving them something that they could compare initially your product with? Here's a great example. Kids who spend 26 minutes texting, you know, really important messages. How about two minutes to brush your teeth? You see, in this ad, they're trying to use the anchoring sales psychological trigger by comparing how little time it would take you know, for our kids to just brush their teeth. So by making your product effortless, you could again increase the value of your product and you could show how easy and how effortless is to use your product. The easier for your customers to understand that your, your product can be used the high conversion rate you will see on your website. Another ad that I've seen in the Facebook ads library, it's from a jewelry brand, Carmen Log. And if we read the copy right here, it says, bring opportunities and abundance into your life by elevating your sense of optimism. So you see, they are not selling you a bracelet. They are selling you opportunities and abundance in your life uh, by wearing this product. When you compare, you know, you go to their website and when you look at the price points of this bracelet, you're not gonna think of, oh, you know, it costs X amount of money. You think of all the possibilities, all the future things that you will get when you are going to purchase this product. And because you're going to perceive that the value you're going to get is going to be much higher, the price of resistance like, goes away. Next one, as simple as it sounds, guarantees. People all, will always have a resistance because they might be afraid that whatever you're selling will not work. And by adding guarantees, you know, by saying if you're not satisfied, you're gonna get your money back or whatever your guarantee is, you literally like remove this objection instantly from your customer's mind. And by doing this, you take out all the risks from your shoulder, making them just kind of think, well, then in this case, if I don't have anything to lose, then their next logical decision is going to be just go ahead and pull the trigger and buy. Now with guarantees, that doesn't necessarily mean that you just need to give you know, the money back guarantee. It could be also associated with the product itself. For example, an ad from Hey Harper, they guarantee that the color won't fade uh, no matter what, you know, wearing their jewelry. When you look at your product and when you want to come up with a guarantee sales psychological trigger, think also about the guarantees around the product because that could be a huge, you know, impact or a, a really powerful method to increase your conversion rate even further. Let's move to the next persuasion technique. And it's going to sound quite simple. And essentially it's, that's not all. I know sometimes it sounds 
too kind of salesy, too pushy, but I've seen it can increase a lot of the value of your product and ultimately your conversion rate. Essentially, what this does is that you're presenting the offer like you are doing right now. And after that, you add some additional products or additional services that it doesn't cost you a lot, but it, it just increases more and even more the value of a product itself that you're trying to sell initially. Now, when I recommend your business owner to use this sales psychological trigger, they think that they have to put literally the text, but that's not all. And that's not what I mean, because if we look, for example, at this ad with this suit, it doesn't necessarily say directly that, hey, like it also, it is flexible, it is very comfortable. We could show that visually, and that will also help with, you know, showing this particular sales psychological trigger that we are talking about. It. Now, the next one is alter casting. Essentially, what this means is that we're going to cast people in certain social roles, but they want kind of like to make themselves feel that they are in that role where they are already in that role. So we could see, for example, this ad from this particular brand. What they are trying to do here and with a copy, they say activate, activate the business tiger within you. It gives you like this impression that by using this product, you'll be stronger and more masculine. So that's kind of like the end goal with this sales psychological trigger that we are talking about it. And now the fifth persuasion technique from this category, we're gonna call it the promised land, which essentially means that we're going to promise a specific emotional desire. It could be, you know, business related or sexual or personal. So this is why we'll see this legendary, you know, slogan from Nike, which says, just do it. This slogan implies the idea that you're going to succeed by wearing clothes. It gives you that sense that by wearing very clothes, you're gonna be a better athlete and thus you'll achieve your goals faster. So as you can see, it again ties up with a promised land that their customers are trying to reach. We talked about the low and the medium level sales psychological triggers, but what about the aggressive ones? What is happening there? And what kind of persuasion techniques we could use there? These tactics are designed to create a sense of impulsive buying. This is the keyword impulsive. While some of these triggers that I am about to show you can be very powerful, you know, they might be ethically questionable and may cross the line uh, to, into like manipulative territory. So we have to be very cautious when we're going to use them. Let's start with number one, guilt and shame. Essentially, brands here try to trigger these two particular emotions in the customer's mind. And this is why you will see that they're trying to use a language that will sound something like this. You deserve this, or don't miss out on this opportunity, don't miss out on buying this special gift for your loved ones. You see how by reading this, you feel guilty by not taking advantage of that product, by not taking care of your loved ones. And as you can see, to put together words like this, it's very simple and many brands are using it and many consumers like customers are buying it because of this without even questioning, without even thinking of why they are actually purchased. But what I can tell you is that from the business owner, from the advertiser perspective, this is one of the techniques that we use all the time. The next one is called disrupt and reframe. It starts with a pretty provocative hook that immediately catches your attention and from there you will start talking about the problem and the solution that you have. Like for example, this ad with these two kids holding two completely different things. And you know, as someone who is just scrolling, let's say who is just looking, who is just browsing, by seeing something like this will definitely make you stop from whatever you're doing. Powerful disruption thing that you could do with your ads is to say the complete opposite, the com the Com like the complete different thing of what people would hear, would kind of used to hear. What this does, it combines multiple sales psychological triggers. So, of course, disruption, when we have social proof, because we see lots of people, they say that don't like it. And then it makes us also ponder, like, what is the reason behind why pe people don't like want it or why they don't desire this product. Now, the next one is what do we call the foot in the door sales psychological trigger. Beginning with something small, a small request could pave the way 
for something like bigger, like some kind of bigger request, which in most cases is going to be just the purchase itself. This is why you will see that more and more brands, they try to kind of get the potential customer involved in some kind of shape or form in their business. This is why like they could offer like a free consultation or let's say a free engraving just to ensure that you know you're building some trust, you're building some rapport with that particular client. And over a certain period of time they will start promoting products that are paid. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that they will go from free to like let's say hundreds or thousands of dollars products worthwhile instantly. It could be like a staircase but the point is that over time they will want to ensure that the lifetime value of the customer itself is going to be huge. I see this a lot with beauty brands especially, but you can use for other niches as well, for jewelry, for fashion, for other industries as well, no problem about it. This type of technique can be a huge potent for many brands that have really huge struggles to get the customer in place. Because in the marketing and business, the hardest thing to do is to acquire a customer. Once you got the customer, then after that it's much easier to sell other products and to upsell or downsell other products that you have on your website and that you offer. Now, to make all these psychological triggers that we talked about in this video effective, it is important to know when and in which situations to use them. Because like we talked about, sometimes, you know, using the wrong sales psychological triggers could get your ad account shut down immediately. This is where I and my team, we've spent a lot of time understanding the human psychological triggers and how to use them properly in, you know, Facebook or TikTok ads. And this is where most likely we can help you to scale your brand. We work with e-commerce brands that make at least $15,000 per month and want to scale up to $50,000, $100,000 per month and above. Check the first link down below and see if you are qualified to work with me and my team. I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button because as you can see, I put a lot of effort and soul into these videos so I could provide as much value as possible to you, to your personal life and to your business. Thanks for being here. I will talk to you on the other side. And as usual, Archie was here and I am cheering you on.